Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I'm a big fan of Arc, the web browser for the Mac. I think it's really great. I've made tons of videos about it, but whenever I make a video about it, people will always come into the comments telling me that they like the idea of Arc. They like some of the ideas in the interface there, but they don't feel like they can use Arc themselves. Maybe it's because they need to log into the browser to use it in the first place. Maybe it's because it uses Chromium and they don't like that. Maybe there's other reasons they don't want to use it. And I totally get that. And today I wanted to show you a new browser that's in alpha right now. So definitely early days, but might be interesting to people who like the idea of Arc, but don't want to use it for whatever reason. So today we're going to take a look at Zen Browser. I'm going to tell you about a dozen things or so that I think are notable about it that you should know, and then you can try it out yourself. All right, so here we are on the Mac, and the first thing I'll call your attention to right here is this tag right here. This app is in alpha. That means it's constantly changing, it's constantly getting updates, and it's not totally stable yet. There are definitely some issues with it, but I wanted to take a look at this early because even in its early state, I think it's really compelling. I've been using it for a few weeks as my main browser, and I'm getting by. It's totally doing the job for me. But definitely in alpha, some things don't work as you'd expect, and we'll see that during this video. Um, but beyond that, the first thing I want you to know is that Zen is available on all major desktop platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. No matter what you're using, it's the same features everywhere, all the stuff works the same, and yeah, that's awesome in a world where a lot of apps are like Mac only or mobile only to start, um, which is crazy to say as someone who grew up in the 90s where everything was Windows only, but anyway. It's immediately available on all major platforms. They do not have plans to bring it to mobile at any point right now, but there is a bit of a workaround we'll talk about in a sec. So in addition to being available everywhere, the second thing you should know is that unlike every other browser, it seems these days, it's not built on Chromium. It's built on Firefox. So it's using Gecko as its rendering engine. It's using some Firefox features and yeah, it's just, it's not built on Chromium and that alone makes it a little notable in the world in 2024. Another thing that's really nice about it, and I can't show you it here because I've already installed the app, but while you're installing the app, there's no need to sign into an account. You don't have to make a Zen account. You don't have to give them any personal information. You just install the app and use it. It's lovely. <laughs> so this is a difference from Arc, which requires you to sign in to and create an Arc account when you use that browser. If that's a bother for you, you don't have to do that with Zen. But what you can do is sign into your Firefox account. So if we go into the app settings and go to sync, I've already signed into mine, but you can sign into or create a Firefox account, sign into that, and then you can sync your bookmarks, history, tabs, all that stuff will sync over your Firefox account. And not only will that sync between your Fire or your uh, Zen browser uh, installs across like different computers that you have, it can also sync to mobile by installing Firefox from the App Store or the Play Store on your iPhone or Android phone, iPad, whatever, and it will sync these as well. So that's actually a nice workaround. If you want to have all this syncing and you use Zen on your uh, Mac, you can have your iPhone using Firefox and everything will sync. It works actually quite well. So that's an option for you. Again, totally optional, but if it's there um, or if you want it, it's there. Now, you might have noticed that I have kind of a blue tint to the interface and that might not be exactly your cup of tea. That's fine. There's a look and feel section here where you can change the uh, hues of the app to any of these options. There we go. Um, you can choose whether to make the uh, rest of the interface match that or not. There's a dark option. And the weird thing about the dark option is that the UI still stays light. I don't really know what the deal is there. Um, a little bit strange, honestly. Um, and then there are some options to like make the buttons more rounded if you want. Uh, you can enable compact mode, which is similar to Arc. So if we want to hide the um, enable it, now the sidebar is gone and you have more width. Uh, there should be keyboard shortcuts to toggle these, but they don't seem to work right now. Again, in alpha, you can hide the top bar if that's what you want and you can hide it all. So again, there should be Keyboard shortcuts to do this quickly, but those aren't functioning right now, so you kind of have to go into settings to do it. Kind of annoying, but anyway, um, did I mention alpha? And in addition to these, there are also a there's also a themes store you can go to, and there's other modifications you can install for the app. Um, so if we go to like midnight, for example, this one should theme the app to be dark, and if I install it, it sort of does, but it doesn't really work. So it's kind of frustrating. So this is another thing about the uh, the beta or the alpha nature of it. Um, yeah, some of these things don't really function how you'd expect. So 
hopefully this will just grow and get better over time. But yeah, if we install this, it gets rid of the rounded corners in the interface. That one actually works, but yeah, um, some of them don't. What about Vesper Dark? Does this work? No, it doesn't work. Why? Is it something with my theme? Like, do I have to set it to dark? I don't honestly don't know why these don't work at, like at all. But anyway, um, hopefully these will get better. And by the time this video is out, maybe this will even be fixed. Uh, because again, it's getting quite a few updates. Um, but in addition to these kind of custom things that they have, this will work with Firefox extensions. So if you use Chrome extensions and install those in your other browsers, those will not work here, but Firefox has a pretty good library as well. I only have a few installed. I have one password for password management, Omnivore for saving things to read later, and then I have it hidden, but uBlock Origin is um, also installed for ad blocking. So the Firefox store has a bunch of extensions available. If it's there, it will install quite nicely into Zen. Now, of course, we do have a sidebar here, and that was kind of the big thing that drew me to Arc in the first place. That sidebar of tabs looked really nice, but was also actually very functional, I found it to be. I found it to be very, very useful. Uh, and so I'm very happy that Zen has the side tabs that are actually implemented well. So I can just tab through them. Everything works great. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this works. Um, it kind of replicates the Arc experience. You can change the width of this to kind of whatever suits your needs. And yeah, I'm just a big fan of side tabs. Uh, if you want to split your tabs, there is a keyboard shortcut, which again, the keyboard shortcuts just aren't working in this build. Um, but if I wanted to split like this blog post and the verges, I could command click on the verges and mine. So I have these two selected, right click, split two tabs, and now they're open side by side. Um, unfortunately, because of the way things uh, are working right now, my keyboard shortcuts aren't working and I can't undo this. Um, normally I think it would be this or this or this, this. No, it's not working. Um, so to get out of this, the only way to do it is to close one of the tabs and uh, that actually closed both of them. So the UI is a little funky with this, but it does have split tabs, which I find uh, pretty useful um, more often than I think. And it's kind of annoying to me that most browsers don't seem to support that. Another thing that's really nice is workspaces. So Firefox has this idea of workspaces. They also have, I think they're called containers to um, have you logged into different types of accounts. So I have a container called personal that's always showing over here. If I'm looking at all these sites, personals over there on the right for all of them. If I open up YouTube, for example, it's gonna show personal and this is logged into my personal YouTube account. It's got my normal just subscriptions here. But I also do YouTube. I have an, a better computer YouTube channel that you're watching right now. Um, I don't want, to, when I go to YouTube Studio, I don't wanna be signed into my personal account and I don't wanna be switching back and forth and browsers don't always like that. But with a combination of workspaces and, um, oh, let's go into it, uh, workspaces and, where is it? Containers. Yeah, container tabs. You have to enable this. But once you do that, you can see I have personal and YouTube. Uh, so those are different containers each one's using. So this YouTube is using personal. If I switch over here to my YouTube space, now you can see up here in the title bar, it says YouTube. And now it's using a different login. So I'm signed into youtube.com, the studio page. Um, but it's my A Better Computer account, and that just makes it easier for me to keep all my YouTube stuff in this workspace. I'm logged into the right accounts. When I switch back to this space, it's my personal accounts. Those are all logged in. You could add like your work account if you use the same computer for work and home, but yeah, that's all available. Keyboard shortcuts normally work. Don't in this build as I'm recording this video, unfortunately. Okay, now the last two things I wanna show you, um, one is kind of a minor thing, but I think that I think is nice, and one is maybe a deal breaker for people. So the thing I think is nice is screenshots. So Command-Shift-S will let you take a screenshot of, you can kind of hover over a div to get just that part of the screen. You can save the full page if you want. Uh, you could save just the visible area, or you can just do a random selection of whatever you want, copy to your clipboard or download it to your downloads folder. I like when browsers have this built in. I just find a nice little quality of life thing. I tend to use clean shot, but if you don't, if you wanna have your browser do that, it's built into Zen. But there is one last thing you should know, and this could be a deal breaker for some people. Uh, if I go to documentation, frequently asked questions, there's gonna be a big one here. Why can't a Zen browser play DRM protected content? Well. It only affects Windows and Mac OS, not Linux, I guess. But basically, because this is an open source project, because it doesn't really make any real money, and because it costs a decent amount to get the license they need to play, to like authenticate a DRM stuff, you're not going to be able to use 
HBO, Netflix, Spotify, Disney+, Plus, Amazon, Apple Music, Google Play, and potentially other things listed here. So if you want to watch Netflix here, if you want to listen to Spotify, those literally do not work. It's really a bummer. Um, if we go to Netflix and try to play something, we're going to try to play this. It's going to open. And there's an error. So it's not really telling you exactly what's going on, but this error is that something's wrong on your browser. And that's that we can't play DRM content. So definitely a bummer, definitely a deal breaker for some people, but doesn't impact me today, day to day, so I've been okay with it. Uh, maybe there'll be some workaround with some extension or something someone can do, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, use a browser like Firefox to do it. So kind of a bummer, definitely a bummer, but depends on how you use your computer, how much it'll impact you. But that's Zen. I'll put links to all this in the description and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.